Are you looking into seeing how you can process chickens yourself? Well, here's all the equipment and all the stuff that we use. Follow along so that you can do it too. So currently here on our homestead, we have 16 Red Rangers that we have been raising for meat. And we also have five roosters that we have in two separate rooster coops. So that brings us to a total of about 21 chickens here that we're gonna have to process and put in our freezer in the next couple weeks. So I thought why not do a video about all the equipment that you're gonna need for processing chickens and the steps that you go about it. So we'll do it in order so you guys can see how we do it. I hope this helps you guys. Let's get right into it. The very first thing you're gonna want is a tent. Or is this a canopy? Or if you don't wanna call it a tent like I just did, maybe you wanna call it a canopy because that's what it is. You're gonna want a canopy. So having a canopy is strictly just for that reason. So if it gets super sunny outside, you don't want the sun beating down on you while you're working. And also if there's any surprise rain in the forecast, you'll be covered from that too. So I think it's a good idea or at least to have some kind of roof over your head while you're doing this. For item number two, you're gonna need some kind of sturdy table to be operating on. This one right here, I believe is a fish filleting table. And what we like about this is that you can actually hook up the hose and it's an operating sink. And then it has like this waste bucket down here that you can throw any of the waste and we'll probably just have like a five gallon bucket underneath there. So after you're done doing your cuts on the table, you can wash them off, throw any of the guts and everything so they go into a bucket down this way. Anything that we're showing you in this video, I am gonna to try to link all of it down below. None of them are sponsors, but they're just things that we use so if you're interested in getting them yourself. Before I get much further, there is something that you are definitely going to want that I have not explained yet and that is disinfectant and soaps, however you want to go about doing this, but anything that your chickens are going to be on or you're gonna cut with or use for your chicken, you wanna make sure it's as clean as can be so that when you go to consume that meat, it is good and healthy and will not get you sick. All right, that was a few of the basic things, but like I said, I'd like to actually show you our process and kind of go in order and explain what you need as we do that. So now that I got done telling you these basic few things, let's go through step by step how we're gonna do it and I'll explain the equipment along the way for you guys. All right, pretty obvious, but you're gonna need a chicken. We have it pretty close so that you don't have to go too far to get your chickens. We will grab one of our chickens and then go to the next spot, which is over here. Follow me along. So when it comes to dispatching chickens, there is so many different ways out there of ways to do it. And many of these ways claim to be the right way. What we like to make sure is that it is quick and painless for the chicken. We want it to just happen nice and fast so that it happens as humanely as we feel possible. We're gonna use just a normal ax. This one here is pretty sharp and it's gonna get the job done for what we need it to do. I think it's called maybe the hatchet and block or ax and block method if you wanna look it up yourself. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the means to dispatch your chickens however you may choose to do. We'd go ahead and we'd put them into this cone. They're called restraining cones. If you wanna look it up for yourself, just type in chicken cone. I'm sure this will be the thing that pops up. And you don't need to build anything fancy or anything like this. This definitely doesn't look fancy, but it does have a little feature that I'm gonna show you in a second. But for this restraining cone, you just need to be able to mount it up onto something. If you can see, the cone comes off and it just has two little screws here on the back. So however you wanna mount it up on, but I built this little stand here and I'll explain why. Is I built this thing right here so that once you put the chicken inside the cone, this comes and flaps down and covers up that cone spot right here. And the reason I went ahead and did that is sometimes these chickens can jump out of the cones. So this is just a good way to secure them where I don't have to keep my hand on them and press them down, especially if we had two chickens in here at the same time. I thought this was just a little helpful thing. I wanted to make it so that if I had to come out here and do this by myself, how could I do it? And I feel like that's just one of those little extra things so that you don't have to deal with any chickens jumping out. The next thing that you're gonna need is either some kind of bucket or tote like we have here that is going to catch everything that drops down and drips down afterwards. We'll probably put some kind of liner inside there so we don't really have to clean clean this out. It'll all just be trapped up in that liner and then we can kind of just wrap it up really easy. But if you are gonna use something, make sure you do use something like this because plastic, you can kind of spray it all down and actually get it clean afterwards. So from here, you'd open this up, take your chicken out and bring them over to the next station. 
which watch your head, make sure you don't hit it on your canopy. So you would have your chicken, and then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to dip them into very, very hot water. So as you can see here, this is a 30 quart turkey fryer, which is definitely gonna be big enough for a chicken. You're gonna just hook it up to a propane tank, and then that what that does is you dip your chickens in so that the feathers will fall off a lot easier and it will be less work for you. This is one of those things that you are going to need. Maybe not a turkey fryer necessarily, but you're gonna need really, really hot boiling water to dip your chicken in. This is something I won't say it's necessarily a need, but I really wanna put it on the need category. Depending on how many chickens you're processing at one time, you're gonna to wanna to look into a chicken plucker. And this is something that you hook up to your hose, you put the chicken inside, and it's going to spin it around, and it's going to take basically all the feathers off your chicken, which is absolutely amazing and time-saving. And then you're probably gonna want some kind of either tarp or small little bucket, because it'll actually shoot the feathers out once it's done deplucking them. But by the time it's done being in there, you basically have every single feather off that chicken at that point, and you are ready to bring them to the next spot. What you might want, it's not necessarily a need if you just wanna cut directly on your table, but I believe it's nice to either have some kind of sheet down or cutting boards, and obviously a chicken cutting board would be perfect for when you do chickens, so that you're not slicing the table or anything like that. And then you're gonna want a few knives. We have about three of these knives right here. It looks like it says Ultra Source on them, but you want really sharp knives so that when you're doing all your cuts, it's nice and smooth and nice and easy. If you have any dull knives, it's gonna make it really hard. So just buy a few extra knives. This one had great reviews, so I think it's gonna work really well. And like I said, make sure you have a few of them. And this is where you take them to do any of the extra cuts that you need to do, where you need to take out everything from the chicken and degut it. That will all happen here on your table. Then you're ready to take them to their second to last spot. All right, you're gonna want a cooler or some kind of bucket or a tote, and you're going to fill this up with ice and water and make sure that the ice is still in there. You want this to be really, really cold water. And after you're done with all doing your cuts with your chicken, you're gonna place it in there and let it soak and rest inside there. Some people do it for a few hours. So a cooler or some kind of thing like one is definitely one of your needs that you're gonna want. And then after the few hours, you're ready for your last step with your chicken and you're almost done with it. After it's rested for its few hours, you're gonna go back to that turkey fryer that it has that really hot boiling water. And what you're going to do is you're going to put the chicken inside a shrink bag. There's a good picture on this. So you put them into your shrink bag, you put the zip tie and you zip up the top. You dip the chicken into that turkey fryer right here. It will vacuum seal with the heat so it is nice and tight with barely any air in there. It gets all the air basically out of that bag. You cut the access zip tie that's there. And then I guess the true last step and something that if you don't have room for, make sure you have the space before you start is you put them into your freezer and you have successfully processed a chicken all yourself. I hope that you understand that the very number one thing that you do want is respect for the life of these chickens. When we decided to start this process, it wasn't because we wanted to save money. It wasn't because we wanted just to do it to do it. We wanted to know where our food was coming from and we wanted to make sure that the animals that we took care of to make sure that they got the best possible life they could have had. So don't forget that when you're doing this process. It's a very big emotional day. It is a hard concept. It is hard realizing that you raised them yourself. But after the end product, it is such a rewarding feeling being out here and taking care of this and just seeing that end goal. Well, I hope this helps somebody out there. Have a great day and a better tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the next one.